Balantro, Balantro, Cilantro, Coriander, whatever you call it, is a super fun deck building roguelike game that's poker themed. So essentially, you're using poker hands in ever changing conditions to meet or beat the target score for every round that you're playing. And you're also limited how many times you can actually play during a round. So you don't need to know poker to enjoy this game. If you enjoy deck building games or roguelikes or puzzle games, this is the type of game that's for you. You don't need to know poker but it does help to familiarize yourself with the hands because the poker hands are a core mechanic to the game. Don't let that intimidate you though, because poker hands are generally not super complicated. Really, you're kind of mixing and matching the same looking cards or getting them in a specific order. But if you do find that intimidating, or maybe it's putting you off just thematically, you can think of these poker hands as sort of your weapons or maybe even as classes in a different game. It helps put you in the right mindset. You're not really playing poker in this game. You are playing a game that is poker themed. The type of hand you play dictates how many chips or points and how much multiplier it earns. So chips, you can just think of them as points. That's how the game refers to it, but it's basically like the scoring, the, the score element of the game. And you can see chips here in the blue area once you have a hand and the multiplier you can see in the red area. And the multiplier is really just uh, exactly what it sounds like. It multiplies your score by however many orders of magnitude it, it needs to. You can always look back at your poker hand list in order to see what the default scoring values are. One thing to keep in mind though, the cards that you play will actually get added into your chip total. So if you play a 10, it'll be plus 10 to your chip total. If you play a five, it'll be plus five. So you'll be earning those kind of extra points if you wanna call them. And what that means is if you're looking to really optimize your hands and pay super close attention to everything that you're doing, you're gonna need to do a little bit of manual math before you play a hand just to know for certain exactly how much you'll be scoring. Maybe in the future there will be an auto calculation update, maybe there won't be, who knows, but right now you are going to need to do a little bit of math if you want to really optimize your scoring. Let's move on to hand and deck management. So you can play up to five cards from your hand or discard up to five cards per turn. You'll draw to your hand maximum each turn regardless of whether you play or discard, so by default you'll always have a full hand. One thing to note is that you cannot play and discard on the same turn. You have to do one or the other. You can also reorder the cards in your hand based on the size of their numbers or basically their symbols, but this is just a personal preference. Go with whatever is best for you. One thing to remember though is that you cannot infinitely discard your cards. So on the UI on the left, you have an indicator of how many discards you have and you need to follow that and you need to make sure that you're not getting yourself into those situations where like, oh man, I really wanna keep discarding to get this one specific hand, but oh, I'm out of discards, oh no. So you really wanna be careful with that. If you're playing at the lower levels and you just wanna get through some kind of easy score challenges, there's nothing wrong with playing simpler hands. You don't always have to go for the most complicated hand. Another thing you wanna be careful with is your deck, because in this game, the deck does not reset once you empty it. It only resets after every round. So if you're playing other deck building games or deck building roguelikes, you might be used to your deck just kind of refreshing itself when it's empty. In this game, it's only after you finish a round. And speaking of rounds, when you play Balantra, you'll need to go through rounds before you can take on the boss round, which essentially levels up the world and increases the challenge for the next set of rounds. You can kind of think of this as the core gameplay loop. You can also choose to skip a round in order to get a special effect, and these effects can be positive or negative depending on what you're going for in your run. So you always want to take a look at every round and what your options are before committing to one. Uh, you want to kind of map out what your run is going to look like as much as you can, and you super always want to pay attention to what the boss is going to be because bosses often have special powers, and usually they're kind of geared towards making it harder for you to play your hands or to do your strategy. So you always want to keep an eye on the boss and think about how you can tackle it in advance. Moving on now, let's talk about where Balatro really shines and that's its endless gameplay modifiers. Oh my goodness, there are so many. We can't even go through all of them because this video would be like 6,000 hours long probably. But what you need to know is that each run, each round that you complete will result in you earning money that you can spend in the shop. This is just in-game currency, in-game shop, not a microtransaction thing. You have these joker cards which will greatly modify how the game plays out and this is where your strategy and planning really comes in as long as a little bit of luck. I mean, it's a card-based game after all, right? Jokers are great because they can do all sorts of things. Usually 
they're leaning towards increasing your chips or your modifiers or what am I saying your chips or your multiplier so essentially jokers are trying to make your cards better for you and you're trying to build some kind of strategy with jokers that kind of synergize or work well together like I said can't really go into every single joker right now this video would take forever but basically you always want to stack up on jokers that are good for how you like to play or that are good based on what's available to you in the moment your jokers go on the bench at the top and you can have five of them by default. It's also important to remember that they activate from left to right. So you always want to be careful with your joker placement because you want to optimize what they do. Sometimes you can get into situations where you didn't maximize your scoring because one joker effect triggered before uh, it should have triggered or you know you might realize like oh no I just lost because if I just swapped these two cards out it would have been so much better. So you can always move the jokers around up there. You can even sell them back to the shop for a little bit of cash. Similar to jokers there are many other modified cards you'll encounter so let's talk about tarot cards. These are the ones that sort of are one time use they will buff you in some way or provide some kind of effect you also have planet cards which can level up scoring abilities of specific hands for example you can make flushes better or two pair or whatever the case may be and when it comes to these consumable cards if you're holding on to them they go on the top right bench and you can only use two of them at a time or i should say you can only hold on to two of them at a time but a lot of these cards you might want to use right away as soon as it becomes available to you not necessarily you know always but for cards that just like upgrade your playing hands or stuff like that you might be like oh you know what i'm just gonna use it right now there's no point in holding on to it and then for other cards you might want to save them for when you're fighting against a boss or uh, a very challenging round you'll also see vouchers in the shop and these are sort of your permanent run modifiers so they will last for the entire run and they're not always super useful it really depends what strategy you're going for right and it depends on what's happening in game but if you buy a voucher, the shop will replenish with another voucher after you beat a boss. And unless I'm mistaken off the top of my head, if you don't buy a voucher but you beat a boss, that voucher gets replenished or replaced by another voucher regardless. So just keep that in mind. There's also card packs and these card packs, you'll discover on your own, they can give you different things like upgraded standard cards that go on your deck or perhaps other tarot or planet cards. There's so many different options. We don't need to break down every single card on its own. Uh, you basically know the main card types right now and, and you're good to go. The rest you'll discover on your, on your way and it'll be fun. Now let's move on to some shortcuts. So let's say you're in the middle of a run and you're kind of not feeling it. Maybe it's not your best run. Maybe you want to experiment with something else, whatever the case may be. And you want to start a new run with like the same starting deck. You don't want to fiddle around with the menus. All you have to do is hold R on the keyboard. And after about a second or two, it will just start a new run for you. It's a useful shortcut. Another handy dandy shortcut is the deselect one and that is done with your right mouse button. So let's say you're picking a bunch of cards in your hand but then you don't want to click on all of them again to put them back in your hand. Like maybe maybe you wanted to play a specific hand but then you were like nah I changed my mind. You can just right click and all of the cards will return to your hand normally. By the way if you don't like unlocking cards in these types of games, if you don't like the progression aspect, if you click on your profile, you'll have the ability to unlock all cards. This will disable achievements, but that doesn't really matter. Like, let's be real. Unless you really care about achievements, it doesn't really matter. So you can definitely play this game how you want to. If you enjoy the discovery progression aspect of it, great. If you don't enjoy that, also great. I have three more tips I want to give you. So in terms of PC frame rate, this game runs like butter on anything, basically, but it makes your PC get ridiculously crazy frame rates. Like if you have a video card that's like relatively modern, you'll be getting hundreds and hundreds of frames that you don't need. And it might be creating fan noise or it might be creating just load on your PC that you don't really want. Well, what you can do is open up your video card control panel. In this case, I have Nvidia. So I go to manage 3D settings. I select the game and then I just set a custom frame rate. I have mine set to 120. You can set it to whatever you want. Just remember, if you set a super high frame rate, but your display refresh rate is lower than that, you're not really getting anything out of that. So, you know, 60, 120, 30, whatever you prefer will work fine. Okay, second last tip. So, you can fiddle around with all sorts of graphics settings. You got the CRT setting, which basically dictates if you want the game to look more like a retro game running on an old TV, or if you want it to not really look like that. You got, you got the scan lines, you got the bending of the screen, all that good stuff. But what's really great for players like me is the screen shake option. You can get rid of screen shake entirely, which I'm a big fan of, and you can activate high contrast cards. High contrast cards are basically just the same cards, but 
they have little gradients on them and their colors are maybe a little bit more intense. So what that does is it makes it easier for your eyes to differentiate between different colors, different cards. Whether you like the look of that or whether you need it for just general accessibility reasons, it's a great option to have. I'm a big fan of high contrast cards in this game. All right, so it's time for me to give you my secret pro tip and I, you know, leave now if you don't want to hear the greatest tip of all time for Balantro, Cilantro, Coriander, because this is going to change the way you look at the game. It's going to change the way you play the game. It's going to lead to game breaking scores. It's going to lead to situations where the game might not even be able to calculate the values that you're scoring because that's how good your score is going to be. Okay, so in the main menu, right? If you click and drag the card, you can move it around and that's kind of like a cool fun Easter egg. But if you click and drag it into a circle and spin it 50 times on your next run, you're going to have 